Hallelujah. You know, this prophetic word was so powerful, I can't help myself than to come back to it. I have to come back to it. Because it's so profound. We are in a prophetic season because we are a prophetic people. Did you hear what I said? We are a prophetic. In fact, I will make it differently. Everybody said, I am a prophetic person. I said, everybody said, I am prophetic. I am prophetic. When you are prophetic, you don't wait for seasons. You establish and bring forth season. That's what prophetic does. You change atmospheres because you had a mantle of the prophetic on you. That's why this morning, you will change the season in which you live if you don't like it. <laughs> okay, I'm going to say it again. When you are prophetic, you don't become a victim of seasons. You change seasons. You don't like it, you change it. <laughs> Praise the Lord. And so, because we don't understand that, we remain in what we don't like for too long until we become so frustrated, we are now believing God, you know, new season is coming. For me, I have decided I bring a new season in my life. And I hope it will be the same for you today. Yeah. Hallelujah, somebody. Yeah. Because you see, when the prophetic word comes and says, look at the watch. Watch speak of time and season. You catch that? So God, through this prophetic word, he is speaking to us, I am willing and I am in the mood to shift somebody's season because of this time. Look at the watch. What time is it on your watch? Don't tell me it's 10, 20. That's not the time I'm talking about. Look at the watch. Jeff, don't focus on your clumsy dancing. All right? So Jeff is a representative of the church. So church, don't focus on what I'm doing well with style or what I'm not doing well with style. This is no time to focus on such. It is time to look at the watch. <laughs> You're catching me? It is not a time, you know what, I didn't take the right step. I did not move properly here. I didn't do this the way. You know what, it's no time for that. Dance clumsy is totally fine. But the most important where your eyes are at. Your eyes need to be on the watch. Do it funny, but on the watch. Do it clumsy, but on the watch. Do it crying, but on the watch. Doing dragging a leg behind, but on the watch. God is speaking to us through this dream that do not be distracted Focus on what really matters at this time. Then on the nonsense stuff around. Because dancing well will attract the attention of people and make you feel like you're cool. God said this is no time to do things so that you are accepted by people. It is time to keep your eyes on the watch. Because I'm bringing a new season unto you. And on the top of that, Heidi said keep your eyes on the watch. It's not just the watch of a new season, but it is, don't miss the timing. You got, you are too low for me today. Don't miss the timing. So it's not just the time, but it's the timing. Let me tell you all the timing watch. These people understand the timing. They can begin, they can begin to, be, to play. Dun, dun, dun. Dun, 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 now, the worship leader there, need to to watch the timing she's in the time we are in singing take control but there is a difference between the time than the timing uh-huh now when the timing comes there is an open door so heidi said to jeff in the dream look at the time but don't miss the timing because if you are focus on the fact i'm a white man i don't know how to dance how am i gonna learn to move like these black folks if that is in your mind you can be in the time and miss the timing. You can be in the season 
and miss the timing. This winter, I rebuke in the name of Jesus. I'm going to preach so hard to you today. Be spiritual for a minute. I'm catching this thing. Are you catching this? Say, yes, I'm catching it. Say it again. Yes, I'm catching it. Don't kill my flow. There is a time and there is a timing. In the timing, there is an open door. So take control. Here I am. Listen. Now, she need when you go dun, 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 na, na, na. don't worry about my voice there is a time now the timing is coming where she had to start singing at that timing a door is open you have to access it so it's no time to be looking at your legs God is saying church be careful. Because you do not understand the timing or the season. So you can get focused on what really doesn't matter. Yet I'm bringing you in a new season. But in this new season, there are a few doors. And you cannot access a door by missing the timing. Because the timing opened the door. I'm interpreting the dreams. That's what I'm doing. When he begins to speak, he hit me. I want to take notes right now. God is saying, cross point fellowship. Don't all get distracted by worrying about your legs that does not dance well. Or your culture that makes you come behind in some third areas. Don't worry about what you didn't learn yesterday or you didn't get yesterday. Don't worry about what you grow up not receiving. You grow up not dancing. You grow up not being taught how to dance. Yet he loves to dance. He said, this is not the time to worry about what you don't have. It's the time to look at the watch. To know it's a new season. And as you understand that, don't miss the timing. Because there are doors that I will be opening in this new season. And if you are distracted, they will pass by you. You will have to wait for another cycle. Don't miss the queue. Don't miss the cue. You know what God is saying? In this season, don't get distracted by trying to fit in. He's a white man. He feels like a can dance. These girls that are cruising, he want to fit in. He want to cruise like they are cruising. He want to dance like they are dancing. He want to fit in. And God said, it's no time to fit in. I want to open doors. But don't miss the time, man. Ramadola. Are you catching that? I want you to repeat with me. Say, Lord. I keep my eyes on you. I'm not in a hurry. I'm not rushing. I focus on what you are doing. And I take authority against any distraction of the enemy. Because from today, I will not fit in. But I will be keeping my eyes in this new season. And on the timing of every opportunity, I shall take advantage every godly door I shall enter in. In the name of Jesus, somebody shout amen. amen. Hallelujah. That's why he said after, spend time with me. Rest in me. Seek my face. No rush. 
Don't get distracted trying to fit in and do the religious thing. Dancing, jumping. Focus. Tell your neighbor, focus. Mark Hallelujah. God is good. Will you give me 25 minutes to give you what? Praise the Lord. Today I would like to speak on the subject. I call it break the silence and say it. Break the silence and say it. And the timing that we're in, and this time, it's a time to recover our prophetic voices. And therefore, we have to break the silence and we have to break the silence and we have to break the silence and Somebody shout, say it. Say it. I say, shout, say it. say it. Hallelujah. If you can say it, you can possess it. If you can say it, it's still far away from you. We have to be able to say it. I travel a little bit around and I've noticed how the people of God, many, have lost their voices. I'm not talking about political fight. And I'm not talking about... Uh, saying you, lose, you lost your voice because the church is not standing up for itself or speaking out in politics. Of course, that can go that, we can go that way. But many people have lost their voices, women, men, young and old, because of the oppression of the enemy. The enemy has one strategy. He wants to quench your voice. He wants to push you down in such a way that you cease to speak. Many people are depressed, stop talking. They just don't talk anymore. They interna- enter, internalize everything. They can worship, they can pray, they can talk, they cannot communicate. They just get locked into a place of silence. The Bible has a name for it. It's called Lodibar. That's where the son of Samuel, the grandson of Saul, lived, called Mephibosheth. He was in Lodibar. The, the Hebrew word is lo is no. Dibar is word. Lodibar is the place of no word. And there are some of you sitting in this place that some areas of your life, you have lost your voice. Now watch me. Probably you talk in this area. Probably you're vocal in this other. But there are some areas of your life where you have become silent. You live in low deeper in those areas. The place of no voice The place of no noise, the place of silence, the place of death. God spoke to me, whenever the enemy steals your voice, he has robbed you from your destiny. Because your voice is connected to your destiny. Your voice is a prophetic voice. Where there is no prophetic word, purpose is unknown. So when you start to speak, Your authority is robbed away from you. That's why when a woman is controlled by her husband and she loses her voice, she becomes depressed and confused, wondering why I'm here on this earth. Those are the strategies of the enemy that have infiltrated our homes, our schools, our churches, our workplaces. The devil used different ways, intimidation and control, to keep you silence, where you can pronounce your better tomorrow. You can speak for the counsel of God for you and your children. You remain silent, you internalize everything, and tomorrow it's suicide. Many people are dead from their destiny, yet they are still walking. They are wandering around, not knowing where they're going. Why am I here? What God has for me? What can I do? 
Because they have lost their voices. Mephibosheth has lost his voice. One was supposed to be a king, but yet live in a cemetery. And we wonder why the enemy destroy our children and our families. We wonder why the enemy have taken control of our destinies. Have you ever been in a place where you are so crushed by circumstances, one after the other, that you get in a place where you can't talk anymore? You enter in a place of mourning. Like if you lost a loved one. Mourning, listen to me, it does not come only because somebody died in your family. Mourning comes from separation. You can lose your business and begin to mourn and grieve. And people are wondering, why have you become so silent yet you have not lost somebody? The person is grieving in silence. And every time a mourning or a grieving become too extended, the devil steal your voice and the devil rob you from your future. That's why when God rejected Saul, Samuel began to mourn and to grieve from that young boy that he picked up keeping donkeys anointed and released to be the king. Now, 40 years later, he sinned against God, rejected the authority of God, and God changed his mind regarding him. He was his firstborn in kingship. He wept and cried. Then he wept one day, and God comforted him. Two days, God comforted him. Three days, God comforted him. 20 days, God comforted him. 25 days, God comforted him. 39 days, God comforted him. At the 40th day, God said, no, stop it. How long are you going to keep being silent? I have called you to prophesy. But because you are mourning, 39 days you didn't prophesy. You became silent. How long are you going to keep silence? How long are you going to keep mourning for this man? Mourning is okay, but when it's too extended, it becomes a problem. <laughs> Hallelujah. Some of you, you can keep mourning, but others among you, you need today to stop mourning and recover your voice. You cannot remain silent, because how long are you going to keep crying for this? Ashandalabai. How long? Yet you lost your job. Yes, you lost your business. Yes, you lost your friend. Yet you get divorced. Yet you get rejected. Yet you get betrayed. It's understandable. And you need to mourn. God will comfort you. But when it's extended over a certain period, the enemy now get access to your life, keep you silent, depress you, and give you a reason to remain in that place. But this morning... I have come to shake you by the word of the Lord and give you permission to stop mourning. In the name of Jesus, come out of that place of silence. Somebody say, say it. Say it. I have seen people destroyed because they mourn for too long. The enemy take advantage of something that was noble. In other words, you have the right to mourn. But it takes advantage because human beings, we extend everything. I want you to leave this place with a voice. And I'm going to tell you how you're going to recover it by the power of God. You will watch. Watch me today. You are about to leave this place shaking out, remove your grave clothes, remove your mourning clothes, and put on some shiny clothes because your future is bright. <laughs> Hallelujah! <laughs> oh, Rabbi Sheila Mandayakaya. Yes, you lost it, so what? Get up.
over it, there is another one coming. You know, we're talking yesterday here at the prophetic teaching with the Ezekiah mandate. And Jeff shared something with me that I think you need to hear. They were on the island of Hawaii. I don't know, that's where God speaks to cross point people. So if you want to go on a vacation, go to Hawaii. Then after that, you go to Abuja, okay? You go to Hawaii first. <laughs> I love my Nigerian people. <laughs> I, that's why I love, I, I bug them all the time. And so, it, 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 we're talking about vision. Vision can be physical, natural, or spiritual. Never all, God can use something that's natural to speak to you. I don't want to cover the cost, but anyhow. So, he is walking at the beach, sitting at the beach, whatever it is, and, and something natural, the waves. They've been there seeing waves, nothing happening. It's okay. He doesn't see any message. And suddenly, these big waves are, are rising, coming like that. And then he look at it, and God begin to speak to him and say, you know, Jeff, these waves, they are the waves of the goodness of God. And I believe as we look at the time in this season, there is waves of God goodness coming toward us. Come on, somebody. I said there are waves of God goodness coming toward you. That wave will touch your business. It will touch your finances. It will touch your children's life. There is a wave of God's goodness coming. And then suddenly the Holy Spirit continues speaking and says, see, this wave that was rising up of the goodness of God, surfers are wandering on it and just playing around with it, on it, just on the goodness of God. And suddenly it dies. And say, see, Jeff, this wave dies. But look, there's another wave coming. I am Bolakata. I come according to his words. You might have missed the first wave. Or you didn't take advantage of the first wave. Or you didn't surf on the first wave. You did not enter in the timing of the first door. But guess what? God said because of my goodness, there is another wave. There is another wave. Come on, there is another wave. Yes, there is another wave coming. Somebody say it. There is another wave. Say it. I say, say it. It's coming for who? Thank you. There is another way coming. Thank you, Jesus. Ezekiel 24, 27. Can we read this together? Ezekiel 24, 27. One, two, three, everybody, everybody, everybody. I want everybody to look here. You need to read, okay, with your beautiful accents. We are ready to go. One, two, three. Hallelujah. At that time. At what? Is that not the watch? God is synchronizing everything. Don't miss this. God, this is a synchronizing of God. We just hear the prophetic word through a dream that God said, look at the watch. And then I did not talk to them. Ezekiel was given at that time. Come on, say it. At that time. Say it again. At that time. Say it again. At that time. Your mouth will be open. And you will speak and will no longer be silent. You will break your silence and start talking again when at that time when at that time when at that time let me tell you what it means at that time because you need to understand at that time at that time speak of season at that time that's what i just said at that time it speak of season now here's the word for at least maybe five people at least watch this don't miss it this season that just get prophesied, that time, it is that time. You hear me? This is the time where you can't help yourself than to say something. He say, in this season, your mouth will be open. As we look at the watch, in this season, your mouth will be open. In other words, you will break from silence and 
you will start talking at this season. There's a season coming where you have to talk. Where you have to say something. You know why? When you open your mouth, you will usher in, in this season, new things. New things. New things. I say new things. I'm preaching to myself because I see it. I see the new things. I see my new things. I really see my new things. Do you see your new things? Oh! I am enriched with new things right now. I visualize it. I'm seeing a vision of my new thing. <laughs> Hallelujah. At that time, you will speak forth new things. You will speak for what? You will speak for what? What are the new things that you've been keeping silence on? There are some new things in you that have never been spoken. You have kept it silence. You've been pondering on it, but you didn't speak it. God said, in this time, you will have to speak those new things in this new season. Okay, here is another one. Every season come empty. Every season is a house without chairs, without decoration, without screens, without sofas, without couches, without beds. Empty. God said, as you open your mouth, you will furnish the season. Hallelujah. No, you didn't get me. I feel like I want to furnish my season. Don't you feel like? Now imagine, imagine a new, fresh, virgin, clean book given to you. And God said, write in it. Or furnish it. Furnish this new season. What would you like to see in this new season? I will say it again so you catch me. I'm, I'm, no, I'm, I want your spirit. I'm, I'm provoking your spirit. Don't think this is a joking word. This, this is prophetic seasonal now, now word. Now, God said through the prophetic word, time, timing, season. It came through this other prophetic word that's the word of God in Ezekiel at that time. Now, in this season, open your mouth, break silence, and furnish your new season with new things. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! You know what it means? You don't need to disfurnish the other season. In other words, God is not using the old season with all his junk and tell you clean it up. And when you clean it up, it will become a new one. No, no, no. He said, leave the old season with all his junk there. I am giving you a fresh, new, clean, open season. Now, your mouth will be open. And with your mouth, you will furnish now your new season. Leave the old season with its couched. Don't pick up the couches in the old season. Are you hearing me, somebody? Don't bring that old man with you there. Leave that boyfriend out there. No, no, no I'm going to say it. I said, in the old season, he told you he loved you. And then he cheated on you with your best friend. In the old season, he told you how he's going to marry you. And it's been now five years he has not married you yet. Now, in this new season, don't bring that Kunta Kunte with you. Leave him out there in the old season. God is giving you a brand new season. Now your mouth is open. Furnish it. Oh, hallelujah. Somebody stand up on your feet right now. I want you to open your mouth under this anointing and begin to furnish your new season. Begin to furnish your new season. Begin to furnish your new season. Now it's not a whole season. You don't need to clean up the whole season. You don't need to remove the things of the old season. You are leaving the old season behind. That marriage, it didn't work. You are leaving it behind. Are you hearing me? That job didn't work out. You are leaving it behind. That relationship did not come forth. You are leaving it behind. That project did not work. You are leaving it behind. Now, God is giving you 
a new season. Open now your mouth. That's what the scripture said. Say it. Open now your mouth. Begin to furnish. Come on, open up your mouth. Begin to furnish. Begin to furnish. Begin to speak new things. It's not old thing. It's new thing. Speak new things. Speak new things. Speak new thing. Speak new thing. Marakalakaya. Radagalandola. Ratayanandola. Sato Kalanamandoya. Radegelemando. Sokaya Taya. Lendereaba. Brasutaya. Larokataya. Leave the old behind. New things. New things. Call for new relationship. Call for new relationship. Call for new business opportunities. Kandololo. Kandololo. New business opportunities. New partners. New friendship. Furnish it. Furnish it. Furnish it. Furnish it. Furnish it. Furnish it. Open your mouth. Speak it forth. Open your mouth. Speak it forth. Open your mouth. Speak it forth. Break with silence. Kaya la kola kataya. Aradada. Landoya. In the name of Jesus. Come on, give a clap offering to the Lord. Thank you, Lord. For a new season. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. You might have a trip in the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. Tell your neighbor, tell your neighbor, you will come and visit my new place. Hey, and my new place doesn't look like the old place. In my new place, you will find what you never seen when you visited me last time. Hey! Marakaya. Last time when you visited me in my old place, I was depressed. I was crying. I wanted to give up. But welcome in the new place. And they will ask you, what did you do? I look at the watch and I say it. Somebody say, I say it. Say it again. I say it. What did you do? What did you do? Oh, I'm visualizing my new place. When you go home, continue furnishing. Continue furnishing. And you know what? Don't spare. Don't spare. Don't bring the cheap stuff in it. Uh, continue furnishing. Bring glorious stuff in it. Bring peace in it. Are you hearing me, somebody? Begin to furnish it again. Hallelujah. Somebody shout, say it. The last time Joshua was silent for six days. Six days is a season. And that season is a season of man. He was oppressed? No. God commanded him, be quiet. For six days, for a season of six days, Joshua just walked silent with the crew behind the walls of Jericho. The Bible says, shh, no noise. No word. Even when you walk, make sure everything is quiet. There are seasons in your life where you walk on eggs, on the toes, and you're not a dancer. Six days. Then, they look at the watch. God introduced a season of one day. One day. Six days of silence, one day of breaking silence. I love this one. That would have been so hard for me. <laughs> Shutting me down for six days, oh my God. And then, I couldn't wait for the six days to end. I'm thinking in my head, when is the six days going to end? Thank God nobody knows what I'm thinking. Then finally the six days come. Oh, I can't wait for tomorrow. 
and begin to clear my throat. <clears> throat> somebody said, somebody said, you don't need to talk, but you can clear your throat. <clears throat> Go like that. <clears throat> <clears throat> you know, you're not talking, you're just clearing your throat. <clears throat> because what? Tomorrow is coming. I'm clearing my throat because tomorrow is coming. <clears throat> Ah, then tomorrow came and they broke what? I want to talk to you. If you have a wall before you, a wall is not just a physical structure. A wall is that what prevents you to access your next better, your next glory, your next blessing, your next reward, your next achievement. That's what a wall is in this case. So they have something separating them from their glory. I want you to see that. There is something in your life for whatever reason, it is that obstacle or adversity that always seems to manifest itself whenever you have to capture the spoil. Right? Whenever you're going to capture the spoil in Jericho, pssst, there is a wall between you and your spoil. I'm loving this one. Then when the seventh day comes, They turn around six. And on the seventh time, can you imagine a bunch of warriors, preachers, world changers, mothers, educators, business owners, project directors, shut them off for six days. They couldn't wait to shout. Now tonight or this morning, we won't break silence for a wall by talking. A wall does not fall by talking. Only a mountain does. Speak to this mountain. Say to the mountain, go throw yourself in BC waters and it shall be so. But to a wall, you don't tell a wall, go and throw yourself in the sea. There is another solution for a wall. Than a mountain. In number one, you don't solve everything the same way. For, for every demonic agenda, there is a kingdom agenda equipped to replace it. So a wall will deal with it by saying, but in this case, they break silence by what? No, you didn't hear me. They break silence by? 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 These people were so filled, they have nothing else to say than release the battle cry. And they went, oh, 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 hey. What do you say? I don't know what I'm saying. I'm just breaking silence. And in this case, don't worry about what I said. I just have a shout. Because sometimes you get in a place where you have no word. You only have a shout. And it doesn't matter how I break my silence. If I don't know a verse. If I don't know the Bible or to quote it. But at least in my God I have a shout. Somebody release your shout. No, no, no. This one, this one was too weak. This one was too weak. You don't get me. Visualize your walls. Visualize your wall. You don't have a word. You've been confronted by this adversity for too long. You've been wrestling with it, with that victory for too long. You don't even know what verse to quote. You don't know who to quote. You don't know what to say. But you have something. You have what? A shot. So when I say say it, it doesn't have to be a word. It can be anything that breaks silence. So visualize this world. And Joshua released them and said, break silence, say it, and release a shout. Release your battle cry. One by seven. Two. Three. 
I want you to begin to think how long this world has present, prevented you. Because that, that will determine the shout you're going to release. You've been tired, blocked by this thing. You pray, you, you try. It's been years. It seems like you can't go any further. It seems like you cannot step any further. It seems like it's close enough, but there is a wall between you and your blessing. There's a wall between you and your healing. There is a wall between you and your promotion. There is a wall between you and your elevation. And it's been there for so long. Four, five, six. Hashalamandaya. We're going to release the battle cry and break silence. I want you to visualize the areas of your life where this wall has been dominating. Where this wall has been confronting you. Where this wall has been preventing you. And on seven, release your shout. Release your shout. your shout break from silence the walls are crumbling down the walls are crumbling down i want you to move and take your spoil i want you to move and take your blessing move and recuperate what belong to you the walls are falling the walls are falling the adversity has been uprooted in the name of jesus hallelujah god bless you thank you jesus Somebody say it, say it. Say it again, say it. Somebody say, say it. Yes, yes, say it, say it. God, have a seat. My God, breaking silence with a shout. My goodness, it doesn't matter if it's yeah, 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 yeah. Or it's hey, oh, 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 hey, 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 hey. Ah, as long as you break silence. Walls are crumbling down. You recuperate what is yours. Hallelujah, somebody. We need to be silence breakers. Silence breakers. The other day, David, the young boy, the shepherd boy, bringing food to his elder brothers. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. They are on the battlefield. Like us Christian. And David brought the food. And he saw something unusual. He saw his brothers and the rest of the army of Israel hiding away. Here's what happened. A giant of the Philistine called Goliath. For 40 days. Every day. He will jump on the hill of the mountain, the holy mountain of the Lord Zion. Not in the valley. He stood on the holy mountain of the Lord, the Mount Zion. That is the church. He stood on the top of the church. And he spoke. He said, you, I challenge you. He tempted them for 40 days. Is there anyone in this army? Is there anyone in the church? Is there anyone in Israel who can take my challenge? Makoya. You bring one man or one woman. If you defeat me, all the Philistines will serve you. But if I defeat him, all the church will bow to me. All Israel will become our servants. One day, 40 days, night and day, the giant stood on the holy mountain 
and spoke for the word. One day, no challenger. The 20th day, no challenger. 30th day, they are still hiding. The church is still crumbling behind in the grave and in the cave. Fearful, intimidated, locked down, silent, mute. No one dare to speak. Oh, shut up. It is said, when somebody challenges you for 40 days and you don't respond, he has won the victory as if he has defeated you. On the 40th day, a young shepherd boy show up on the scene. Not the 39th, please. 40th. Not on the 25th. 40th. When it was time to close the deal and say, Philistines, you won. Here we are, we surrender. The church will never surrender. I said the church will never surrender. Your family will never surrender. You will never surrender. Your children will never surrender. There is a 40th day. And on that day, God sent his man. Little boy, Joseph. Ashallah. Who shall we send in this house? Joseph show up not knowing the real reason for which he was there. He thought he was bringing food, not knowing he was coming to challenge what was challenging his nation. And then he said, what the heck is happening here, guys? I just heard somebody talking very loud and so bold. Because by 40 days, Goliath had become more taller. Because when your enemies challenge you and you don't respond, you become bigger. It become more comfortable and it become more confident, isn't it? Now, if you like 40th day, it will be like the 39th, it will be like the 25th, it will be like the first day, it will be like the fifth day. But it doesn't know our God is a God of the 40th. I say, Our God is a God of the 40th, and I prophesied the 40th of somebody has come. I'm not talking about your birthday, I'm talking about in this season, your 40th has come. He show up on the scene. And he asked. They said, shh, 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 shh. We don't talk here. We are in the season of silence. Shh, shh, shh. These guys have been so intimidated that they become silent. Taunted, fearful, silence. Crushed down, silent. For 40 days being abused continually. By the same voice, by the same man. We didn't talk slowly. Standing on the holy mountain top where they should be worshipping. No, you didn't catch me. The devil is not standing in your living room. He's standing in the holy mountain of your home. This is spiritual. I need to bring it down for you. You catch this? In other words, your house is not a house. It's a home. And that home is a sanctuary. In the spirit, there is a place of worship and prayer. That's where he likes to stand up. On the place where you meet your God, he stand up in the place of your worship, of your praise, of the place of intercession. He stood there in the center, not in the bathroom, in the altar. And he turned the church. Who's there? I challenge you. 40 days, 40 nights, no challenger. They are getting more fearful. More defeated, smaller, weaker, more silenced, more mute, more. Yet 40 days was coming. And David showed up and they told David, shh, 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 don't make noise. Shh, shh, shh. This is the way we've been living here. At least he's not beating us. We are safe here. Praise the Lord. At least we have a testimony. The enemy has not, he just insults us from far. But <laughs> <coughs> it's still a few things you haven't taken yet. So praise the Lord for that. Praise the Lord. You catch the picture? And David said, David says, Who is this? That's the way he breaks silence. Insult. Yes. Yes. Who is this? In 
is so uncircumcised. Yeah. You know what it means? Who's this dog? Yes. Mango Gaga Dagaya. Uh, who is this dog? Are you getting mad enough? Yes. Who is this dog daring to stand on the holy hill of the Lord and tempt the people, the army of God? Who is this dog? David, please don't put us in trouble. Oh. We've been safe for a year for good 40 days. You little boy, go make your noise with the sheep there. Here we are in the silent season. Jesus. We are safe here. I'm coping with it. It won't kill me, so I just accept the way it is. I'm just coping with it slowly. At least I survive. Don't come and try to change this season. At least I have few good days and few bad days, but at least few good days. Don't, please don't. Shh, shh. Go back to the ship where the noise is. Season here, silence. David said, mm -mm. I come to wake you up. Hey! Wake up! Who is this uncircumcised Philistine? Who is daring to challenge the armies of God? Then David said, by the way, what is the reward? What a way to break the silence. What a way to break the silence. This boy was a businessman. He wanted to make money right away. <laughs> what, what a way to break silence. What am I going to get here? I'm breaking silence. Somebody said, I'm breaking silence. Not for nothing. No, 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 no. I'm breaking silence, breaking silence. Not, for not for nothing. I am breaking silence, breaking not, for nothing, not for nothing, but for something. for something. What is the reward of breaking silence? That's what he's saying. What am I going to get if I make noise? What is it mine to recompense me? Today, this service, you will never forget. You know why? Because you are breaking silence. Yes. And therefore, there is a reward for you. Amen. I said, because you say it. Yes. Because you say it. Yes. Because you say it. Yes. There is a reward for you. So I'm not breaking silence for nothing. I'm breaking silence for a reward. Somebody said, I am breaking silence, breaking silence for, a for a reward. And then they said, boy, you haven't got it yet. Shh, shh, shh. Don't say something, please. Don't put us in trouble. And David said, is there not a cause? This one? Is there not a cause to break silence. Okay. Okay. You who felt like yesterday was so unfair. Last adventure really took everything out of me. And at the end of the day, you know what? It's not worth it. Is there not a cause? You know what it means? Can this kunta kunte prevent you to fulfill your calling? Can this job you lost prevent you from fulfilling? So is there not a call? You know what David said? You guys are silent. Don't you have a reason to break silence? You know what it means? <coughs> when you know there is a cause, it doesn't matter when God will heal my son. I will still preach, still open churches, still minister. Yeah. Are you hearing me? Yeah. Why? Because there is a cause. Yeah. It does not matter. Is there not a cause for you that you will let the past lock you down? 
Like if you were born for that person. Like if you were born for that job. Don't you know there is a greater cause than the job you lost? Is there not a cause? Yes. So why can you allow yourself to be crippled in such a way? Like if all life was all about that only. Jesus. David said, because there is a cause, you cannot remain in this season of silence. Because there is a calling, an assignment, an agenda. Because God has something greater for you. You cannot allow what did not work yesterday to turn you up. When you know there is a cause, you will rise from the greatest oppression. And take one step at a time. It might be slow steps, but at the end of the day, you will end up running. Am I talking to somebody? Am I talking to somebody? Somebody shall say it. Why? Because there is a cause. Kondolo Kotalamanda. Ah, there is a cause for David. And that cause was a battle and a mantle. A battle and a mantle. Somebody say battle and a mantle. Say it again. Battle. Say it again. Battle. Why David has to fight for a battle and a mantle. That was his cause. His cause was a battle and a mantle. For you, there is a battle and a mantle. That's why you cannot remain in the season of silence. You have to move out and say it. Somebody say battle. battle. Mantle. mantle. Say it again. Battle. battle. Mantle. mantle. Somebody say say it. Battle, battle and mantle. mantle. All the women tell the men, why do you have to fight? No, no, no. Tell them they need to hear it. For the battle and the mantle. All the women, all the women, speak loud, shout it to the men. Why do you have to fight? Okay, let's make it right. All the women stand up. I will help you. Malaku Kalamutaya. Randa Kaya, is there not a cause? Is there not a cause? Is there not a cause? Now, all the ladies, you will tell the men, why do you have to break silence? Why and, do you have to break silence? Battle and battle. Okay, very good. So the women will say to the men, why do you have to break silence? And then the men will respond, for the battle, and a mantle. No, no, no. With an attitude. So the women will ask, why do you have to break silence? And then the men will respond, for a battle and a mantle. Are you ready? One, two, three, ladies, go. Women again. Say it again. One more time. Hallelujah. Why do you have to fight for a battle and a mantle? Is there not a cause? Kila Mondakaya. Now the man is your turn. Stand up. You ask these girls. With a strong voice. You know, listen to me. That's not a joke. This is a prophetic expression that silence is broken. It removed them from their season and dropped them in the season. Are you hearing me, somebody? So this is a prophetic gesture that is very powerful because you have recovered your voice when you ask a question. Jesus asked questions, didn't he? Jesus asked question, didn't he? Yes. Why did he ask question? Every time he asked question, he want to change your state. He want to change your purpose. He want to change your status. He want to change your season. So I'm not asking you to do this because it's a good game. This is a prophetic because God just spoke to me right now as, as I'm doing it to you. Amen. So that's why I want you to turn to the woman. The one who's by you and if there's none. And look at them straight. 
and speak to their spirit and ask them, why do you want to break silence? And Okay, we're going to do it in unison. We're going to do it in unison. And the woman, when you are responding, stand up. All right? And say, no, no, don't do it now. When they ask you the question, you're going to stand up and say, for a battle and a mantle. Do you hear me? In unison. Men, are you ready? Yes. Clear your throat. <clears throat> One, two, three, go. Why? Ask them again. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Somebody shall say it. Somebody shall say it. Somebody shall say it. Why do you have to fight? Why do you have to fight? Why do you have to break silence? Why do you have to say it? Somebody shot battle. Manto. Battle. Manto. Have a seat in Jesus' name in holy places. That's why we have to fight. That's why we have to break silence. For the battle and a manto. Because for every battle there is a manto. For every battle there is a manto. Why do you have to break silence? For the battle and a mantle. Hallelujah, somebody. That's what David said. Is there not a cause? Is there not a cause? Is there not a calling upon your life? Is there not a greater purpose than what you lost? Jesus. Is there not a greater purpose for your life than the people who betray you, who lie to you, who gave you false hope, who break away, rank away from you? They drop you in nowhere. When you needed them the most, they were nowhere to be found. But yet, you've cried, you've complained, but I have come to put an end to your days of mourning and release you in a new season. Why? Because there is a greater cause. There is a greater call. There is a greater assignment on your life than what happened to you. Is there not a cause? Yes. For a battle. A mantle. I feel charged dangerously. Are you hearing me somebody? One day, David counted the people and God didn't like it. So God sent the angels of death and killed so many of David's people. David asked for forgiveness and God put a hold on it. And Satan spoke to David and said, boy, all these 34,000 was killed. It's coming after you. You are next. God going to kill you. You are going to die. Are you hearing me? And David, because of all the people who they died, because of the calamity and the mourning in the land, he was silent. But in his silence, the devil spoke to him and said, it's your turn. You are going to die. And David broke silence. And he said, I will not die. I shall live to declare when the devil say you will die, you break silence. And you said, I will not die. I shall live to declare the wonders of our God. I might speak to somebody, what the devil has been telling you? That you won't make it? That you will die? Say it. I will not die. I say, say it. I will not die. Say it again. I will not die. Say it again. I will not die. Why? Because of a battle and a mantle. There is a cause for my life. And I'm not done. Yes. I can't die. Yes. I say I cannot die. Yes. I will not die. Yes. Devil, I won't die. Yes. I will not die. Yes. yes, God killed them. But death has to stop when it gets on me. Yes. Why? Because of a battle and a mantle. I'm not finished. 
The other day, Zechariah was so discouraged. He was building the temple. For 14 years, they started and they left it alone. Don't miss this one. They gave up on construction. 14 years. The devil spoke to him and said, you, you can't finish what you start. You were too excited. Yeah, we're going to build the church for the Lord. Hallelujah. <laughs> this business, we're going to build it right now. I'm too excited. Oh, this marriage. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Happy, happy. Boyfriend. Oh, honey. Tomato. Cucumber. I can't sleep without you. My heart beat at the rhythm. <laughs> you started. And the devil comes in. 14 years. Ah, nah, 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 nah. You cannot make it. Nah, 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 nah. Then, Zechariah is wondering, what am I going to do? He's thinking in his heart because he was in silence. For 14 years, even the noise of a tool was not heard. Zechariah who started excitedly, silent. And the devil said, you, can't do anything. The devil did not know that God changed the season of Zechariah by taking him in a new season. So here's what God does. Because Zechariah could not break silence, why he couldn't break silence? He had no word. Zechariah has no word. Today a word was given to you. Yes. So Zechariah has no word. He has no word. He is in silence. He is oppressed. He started. He couldn't finish. He is defeated. And the devil is going, nah, 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 nah. And the Bible says, and God sent a word to Zechariah saying, Zaki? <laughs> <laughs> you can break your silence without a word. So what I'm going to do for you, I give you a word. He sent a word, and the word said, you know the word? What is the word? Huh? What? <laughs> Tell me the word. Your prayer has been answered. He said, the word of the Lord came to Zerubbabel. What did he say? Who is that mountain before thee? What is this mountain before thee? He will turn it into a plane. But it will not be by might, nor by power, but by. And then he went on and said, I see one running with the finishing stone. The hand that started the work will finish it. Yeah. Hallelujah. Am I speaking to somebody? I don't, <coughs> I don't know what you have started. But the hand that has started it shall finish. Say it. The hand that started it shall finish it. It broke silence and said, I will finish it. In other words, I quit to sit down crying on my situation. There's no time to sit down and cry on your situation. The word has come. Is the word not come? Did we not have the word? I said it. This is no time to sit, cry on your situation. Because if you didn't have a word like Zechariah, Zerubbabel, today you had a word. That word empowers you not to sit and cry on your case. It releases you from mourning and enters you into a new season where you can furnish it by the speaking of the word. Amen. Are you hearing me, somebody? 
You leave this place, all the people who had mercy on you, they cannot find it anymore. They had pity on you. Oh, the poor boy, the poor girl, going through so much, oh, so difficult. No, 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 no. This word should empower you to become a lion. Amen. Is there not a cause? I say, is there not a cause? I'm closing, but I want to speak to you now straight. Do not allow anything, anybody, any circumstance, any tragedy, anything to stop you from running the race for which you were born. Amen. Do not. I said do not. It doesn't matter who is with you or who is for you. Or against you. It doesn't matter what you know or what you don't know. It really doesn't matter whose fault it was. This is no time to ask why is question. Why? Why this happened? Why? 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 The why should go to silence. Amen. The battle and the mantle should become louder. Amen. It didn't work out. It broke down. It was taken away from you. You were betrayed. Yes. But do not let anything hold you back from fulfilling destiny and the reason for which God has brought you that far. We all have reasons to give up. Everybody sitting here under the sound of my voice and those who are watching. We all have reason to drop our hands. But no reason is a reason enough to take you away from the greater call. None. No matter how abuse they did to you. No matter the mistake you committed. It's not enough to hold you back from running the race. It's not enough to hold you back from God calling. And I come here by his voice. God did not change his mind about you. Do not let the enemy speak to you that God is so disappointed about you. You have fallen so short of his expectations that he changed his mind. That will be a lie that wants to put you in silence and keep you in silence. But the word said, say it. It doesn't matter how many times you have failed. It doesn't matter how many setbacks you are cured in your life. God has not changed his mind. Amen. He still loves you the same. He still believes in you the same. Your destiny is still as colorful as it was the first day. The same. His thoughts towards you are still filled with great dreams. Say it. God is putting words in your mouth. <coughs> that you will be free from shame and guilt and condemnation. We are entering in a new season as a body leaving the old behind with all his garbage. Amen. God is summoning us to refurbish? No. To repair? No. But to furnish with new, 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 new ideas. 
new projects, new relationship, new pursuits. New. New. That you will know the hope he has for you. By your head. Thank you, Jesus. Where will we go, O Lord? Where? You know our dark days. You know our weakness. You know our valley moments. And you know even the things that we are wrestling with. But we believe today a change has come. You are changing us from locations into new places. Just stand up on your feet and close your eyes. I feel like just ministering on you like this. And right away we will begin to prophesy and speak forth the counsel of God because he has opened our mouth. Don't miss this picture of a new place, of a new season. There's a timing coming and open doors coming. I see many of them. I see many rushing indoors to access the next dimension of their walk with God, the next place of their ministry. I see them standing in new places of authority, elevated in new places of recognition, running through those doors where they recover what was lost in the past seasons. They are dressed with a mantle for the battle, anointed with fresh oil, shining bright like the light. There is a beauty coming out of them that cannot be ignored. Oh yes. Surely righteousness have kissed mercy. It is that season. It's your season. Refuse to remain in the old. Somebody is saying, but you don't know how deep this cut me. Yes, I do not know. But there is an oil that is available this morning. It's a supernatural oil of the Holy Spirit to heal what could have taken years can be healed and a scar can come instead of a wound. Allow God to touch those areas. I feel God enriching the spirit of people with new dreams, with new delights, with new pursuits, with new ideas. Oh, fresh visions. Some who were barren of joy rivers of joy living waters begin to flow you are so silent spiritually you are breaking out like a flower blossoming out showing your colors breaking free and breaking the silence to expose the cause to stand for the cause to speak for the cause to live for the cause to sacrifice for the cause to pursue the reason for which you were caught your faith is growing suddenly there is a delight to stand and to spend time with God Woo. that dryness 
is cracked out from your heart. That dryness is cracked out from you. You become sensitive. There is a new passion and attraction to the things of God that are rebirthing, that are bubbling like a water coming out of the ground. Bubbling. You recovering your prophetic words. You are recovering your visions, your dreams. You are recovering the fresh fire. You are recovering the delight to be in the presence of the Lord. Oh! Everything is changing around you. Everything is changing around you. Supernatural endowment allowed you to forgive so easily because of this new season in which God is taking you. Righteousness have kissed with mercy. Truth and grace walking together. The goodness of God coming like waves empowering you to do what you couldn't do. Overcoming evil with those waves of goodness. That is the garment that God is putting upon us. Dressing us up to enter that season. Kondo. Latoke lebosa. I see many in the spirit that could not stand up. Just sitting. With sackcloth. Morning cloths. Darkened in their spirit. They begin to give up on themselves, abandoning themselves, even physically, mentally, in every area. God is dressing you up again with glory. He's dressing you up with dignity. You can smile at the future again. Arise and shine, for your light has come, for the glory of the Lord has risen upon you today. He's crowning many with goodness, with loving kindness, crowning you, restoring your dignity, so you don't walk with your head down anymore. Oh, lift up your chin, lift up your head, open your eyes, your shame has been removed, you are dignified, you are honored in the presence of the Lord in this season. I want you all to sit down. Close your eyes. The people who were at the training yesterday, I want you to stand up as God is leading you, walking to the individual one by one. When you begin to minister to them, make them stand up. Under this anointing, begin to place something in the back, please. And I'm telling you, don't miss this moment. For the next 10 minutes, we will do this. Be bold. Jesus Christ wants to minister to you. You can take them and bring them in the front. Minister to them. And go back get the other person. Or let me put it this way. If you need ministry, just come in the front right now. And everybody should be in the front. Because God wants to speak to you. Come and stand right here in the front. And let God minister to you. We're going to prophesy today. I feel prophecy coming forth. The spirit of prophecy is in this place. Sometimes all you need is a word. Zerubbabel. To finish what you start. Come on people. Begin to minister. So O chocolo manda bayande lelele O chele bayande lele bababash O shanda ya kala bosh Come on ministers begin to minister to the people quickly Be bold Say it God has a word in your mouth to them Say it Climb it up a little bit. 
climb it up a little bit. That's perfect. Oh, Begin to minister to people, please, prophetically. Hallelujah. Is there anything too difficult for the Lord? Is there anything too difficult for me, says the Lord? Is there any situation too complicated for me, says the Lord? Am I not aware of everything? Eden the sparrow. I know its ways. And the eagle. I know its ways in the air. Is there anything too difficult? Is there anything too complicated? Bring it back again, bring it back again. That's good, you are drop it, keep it that way. Standing in front of that door and knocking. It seemed like nobody's answering on the other side. And you're wondering, am I knocking on the wrong door? The Lord said to you, Why are you knocking on a door that is already open? Step forth. Step forth. Enter in. Like to the Philadelphia church, I have set a door before you. It's a door of opportunity. Enter in. Enter in. The Lord said, let me dress you with a garment of dignity. Removing the garment of shame, of failure, self-condemnation. Arise, my daughter. Arise, my son. It's a new day. It's a new day. It's a new day. It's a day for a new thing. It's a day for new thoughts. It's a day for new ways. It's a day for new dreams. It's a day for new vision. Come on, begin to minister. There's more people to minister to. said the stone that was rejected will become the cornerstone you are may be called the black sheep of your family you have live a life where you never feel appreciated but the Lord says in this new season 
you are becoming a cornerstone. You are becoming an important stone. He will reveal to the world the hidden treasure that are in you. And you recover your voice. You recover your authority. And you recover your authority. You recover your place. I know, I know, I know, I know, I know, I know, I know. You become to know. You begin to know. You begin to know. You begin to know. Ashoko la manosha. We give you friend. We give. Hallelujah. 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 I think there must be more other people here to minister to. Come on. Begin to minister. prophetic voice recover your voice of authority recover your destiny recover all that have been stolen away from you in this new season from the place of rest furnish furnish say it Say it, 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 And you feel it to be ministered to in this atmosphere. Just hug somebody. Tell them how much you love them. And the Lord bless you in Sion Wednesday, Tuesday, Friday, and Sunday.